My name is Dewey Evans, and this is Tennis 2020. Uh, I wasn't quite sure today should be a Tennis 2020 theme or should be on my personal channel as a rants and raves type thing, but I thought I would do it here. Most of what I want to talk about today is tennis related. Um, we are here in the EKH Studio One, freshly completed. Well, I wouldn't say completed. It's always going to be kind of a work in progress, but it is where we will do the majority of our studio related shows. Um, be bringing in some people and interviewing them. We will be recording some things for broadcast later. So you'll see this. So we still have some sound things to take care of as you may be hearing big echo, things like that. We're going to be testing a lot of gear in here. So please give us your feedback as we use different things today. I am using the Rode Reporter microphone and it is being brought in via the Rode uh, new shooter system wirelessly into a Zoom H6 recorder, which is being used as an audio interface into our computer. Um, let, let me know how it sounds and I know where my settings are. Let me know if I need to make the volume a little louder. Some people have said that videos are a little bit quiet, so I need to kind of pump it up so that everybody isn't always having to turn their volume all the way up in order to hear what we're doing. So certainly want to hear your feedback. It's Monday morning. I was actually going to do a Monday morning vlog. Oftentimes Monday comes and I'm trying to get my week set and I'm thinking about what happened over the weekend and kind of trying to get my thoughts squared away. And there's still some of that going on, but I wanted to kind of jump in the studio and do some things. This weekend was busy. Well, the facility we currently run, and that's a part of what we're going to talk about a little bit later, called Fretz Tennis Center. And it was one of the sites for a Super Champ Major Zone uh, event this weekend, which in a Super Champ Major Zone is the highest level of Texas junior tennis. There's one of them held for each age group somewhere in the state each month. Uh, this month was... It was held for both for the 12s all the way through the 18s here in Dallas. And we were a site predominantly on Saturday. We were girls 18s. And then yesterday we were the girls 14s as well as the girls 18s and a little bit of boys 12s, um, singles and doubles. It was a good weekend. It was nice being out in the mix of competitive junior tennis again. It's been a while since I've been in it full time where I needed to do it. I felt like it was a good chance. My daughter, you might've seen an earlier video that we're not playing the girls 16. She's going to play the girls 18s and super champ back up and be part of that group. So it was a good chance for her to see what that level of tennis was and chance for me to be around high level tennis so the, part, the heart of the game which has always been my passion the place where if i was talking to you about it all of a sudden i would go from being here to like you could just tell that i was talking about something that i just cared so much about and i found that coming out when i was talking to parents about their kids and about the journey through junior tennis and it was going really great and then well Here's why I thought this should probably be rants and raves. We've employed a lot of people over the past eight years, and we've ended on good relationships with most of them, had to let some of them go. The majority of them have moved on to bigger and better things, and we still have reasonable relationships. But there was this one bad egg, and I'm going to use his name. His name's Cameron Greenwood. And... I had to fire him. Why did I have to fire him? Because he didn't want to do things our way. He wanted to wear his hat backwards when I wasn't around. We have an adult beginner program, which is done on smaller courts using lower compression balls. Well, when I wasn't around, he chose to take those 
people and put them on big courts using full compression balls. Unless the person at the desk said, well, Dewey's going to be here. And then all of a sudden his hat would go forward and he would put them on the right courts. And it's, well, you know, if this were rants and raves, you know what I would call that person. Yes, he is what I consider to be an idiot. Well, I had to let him go. Um, cause eventually it reached the point where he was trying to bully staff and other things. So I let him go. And as with every coach who works for us, he was issued a, an iPad and he has refused to bring the iPad back. Um, has also refused to give back the keys to Samuel Grand Tennis Center. Well, yesterday he shows up working at, for one of the other programs in Dallas and the person at the desk tells me, oh, Cameron's here. So I'm like, okay, cool. Uh, I'm going to find out where my iPad is. So I went outside and found him and walked up and said, dude, where's my iPad? And he said, where's my money? I said, what money? Because he has sent us an email saying he didn't want to come back to the facility. So please send him a self-addressed, um, paid prepaid envelope to send the iPad back, but he's never said we don't owe him because we don't owe him any money. We don't ever owe people money. In fact, people that leave on good terms that we have to let go, we pay extra severance. It's not a ton of money. We don't have a ton of money that we can afford to do, but we have made it a practice to give people everything we owe them plus a little bit more because the last thing we ever want to do is get caught up in we don't pay people because we do. We, always pay people we don't owe anybody we pay our bills so this goes on for a while and one of the coaches he's sitting on a bench and he's watching matches and I'm asking him where's my iPad and he's coming back with blah 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 and eventually one of the other coaches for that program TBRM Tennis Academy says, this isn't the place to do it. I said, dude, this is my facility. He has an iPad of mine that comes from him working for the company which runs this facility. I'm going to ask him for my iPad. I'm not yelling. I'm not doing anything. Um, so this goes on. So he gets up and he walks away. Cameron, that is, gets up and goes somewhere else. So I follow him. And I say, get in front of him. I, Where's my iPad? And I probably said it 15 times, something like that. Everybody heard me say it. And then we go inside the building and he's being belligerent and I'm standing. Okay. So we're going to fast forward a little bit because I'm going to blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm standing in the doorway and as he's going to go out, he decides he's going to take and gives me a forearm shiver into a piece of furniture inside, knocks everything off, including trophy that my daughters and a friend won when they won the JTT city championships in 2011, I believe it was, uh, which broke. So we call 911, please come talk to him, talk to me, talk to other witnesses, which were there. And he is issued a citation. Um, Cause my take on it was, I, I said to the police, you know, I'm much bigger than Cameron. I said, you know, a couple of things. I want this fully prosecuted, but if you're going to tell me that what happened to me wasn't a violation of the law, then I will accept that and please leave and tell him he's more than welcome to come back inside. Yeah, you get what I mean, right? Um, but that isn't how it went down. They, they wouldn't arrest him, but they issued him a citation. He's going to have to either make a court date or plead guilty um, to, salting me. Um, and I, I hope, I fully hope that this video reaches lots of people and that he no longer can work in tennis because it is unacceptable for somebody at a tournament to be, it's unacceptable at any point in time for people to be physically assaulting other people. It doesn't work. He needs to lose his job. Enough on that rant. I'm going to kind of talk about what the future looks like for me. It is very different than what it has been. Um, we were informed very recently that we were not the chosen bidder to continue to run the tennis facility that we are running. Well, why that is, I'm not quite sure when we are 
easily number one revenue wise. We've done nothing but improve everywhere we are, but it wasn't given to us. The bid was given to people that run another local tennis center, not a Dallas facility, one in McKinney. Um, or at least that's what it looks like is being presented to Park Board as the option. So, you know, we're looking at what are the options? What do we do going forward? What you're looking at now with the video production was something that we wanted to do in the future, but not until after this contract was over or the next contract was over. So we were hoping to have that as a revenue stream, a way to keep paying our bills while we figured out the best place for us to be operating in this digital media market. Well, we don't have that luxury, it looks like. It looks like sometime in the next several months, definitely by mid-spring, this will be where the money's coming from. Or possibly this and some other things, like maybe I coach a few kids. I, I found yesterday I really love being out there with kids who want to be good. It's the part of the game I thrived in for a long period of time. It's what I've not done very much of at all, really at all, over the last two years, and not very much of over the last eight years because we were busy running public tennis centers and doing what a good public tennis center will do, which is get people into the game, bring them in, um, so trying to figure out what that next thing will be. And so if you see me, like, it seems like he's grasping for something that's not quite there. Um, that may be true. I know what it's going to include. It's going to include cameras. It's going to include microphones. Some of it's going to include tennis, as I think about it. And I throw ideas out knowing that somebody else could pick them up and run with them. And me not really caring because if it was meant for them to do it, then they'll do it. But if it, the vision was given to me, then I'll execute on it. So you know, one of the things that I believe is tennis coaching conferences should be available to a lot more people. It's hard for tennis coaches who are often living paycheck to paycheck, don't have paid leave other than maybe some of the people at the top of the country clubs, to be able to get away for a week and go to a conference. Um, but if those conferences were live streamed and someone did virtual tickets so that people could be in on those sessions and possibly be part of the chat so that whatever the presentation was when they started asking for questions from the audience, those questions could be answered, um, would be both an additional revenue stream for the conferences and a way to get really good information to the tennis coaching community, which really needs it because honestly, the tennis coaching community in a lot of ways is behind. Most people teach what they were taught, um, which was good then. So people are teaching to an old standard um, and very few are getting good information, even though it is good information is being put forward. So I'm really gonna be seeking ways to reach out to all of those people who are putting, whether it be the Texas Tennis Coaches Association or the local chapter of the USPTA or somebody like a, a Mike Barrow doing conferences, but certainly things like the USTA Tennis Teachers Conference and the ITF um, World Coaches Conference and things like that, those things should be streamed. You know, it's not gonna cut down on ticket sales because there's great value in being there, the interactions and the relationships you develop with others who are also there is well worth the trip and the cost of admission, if you can afford to do that. But if a conference is being held in Vietnam and I live in Frisco, Texas, the chances of me being able to A, afford 
be logistically being able to take off work for long enough to go and attend are pretty, pretty slim. So does that mean that I don't deserve to get the information that's presented at those kinds of conferences? Um, I think I do and many others do. So I'm going to be looking at that. I'm also going to be looking at some things which are done on court. Um, maybe some of it is drill related and doing those things. Some of it might be gear reviews, but I believe what you see in an online tennis, I guess you might, might call it instruction, isn't done very well. So I think there's a huge opportunity to dig in and produce quality content um, from people with good information. There are a ton of great coaches in the Dallas area. I met a couple, I'm not going to drop any names right now, but who are operating here um, who have said they would be willing to be guests. And I think as part of being a guest, we should also be able to get, you know, a little two minute tip or something or a little segment where they talk about tennis um, on the court. So there are a lot of ideas which are perking through this little head. It's Monday. I needed to get out and to make some things happen. So I am here turned the cameras on using vMix. Um, as I said, I'm, I'm using the Road Reporter microphone today. So, you know, please let me know how that's working. Uh, we are going to do a test using, um, well, using this, maybe using the microphone that uh, can be run directly into the Zoom H6, so the capsule which goes on it with the XY mic. Um, and lav mic. So those are kind of the microphones that I have at my disposal right at the moment. So those are the ones that we'll probably test. I think we'll do it at the same time that we're doing soundproofing so that we can see how it sounds. So we'll get all the microphones going um, at the same time and kind of do that test and test it as we put up different kinds of sound treatment inside of this facility. And get your feedback on how we're doing, what's working. If it looks like it's working and we do a good job, uh, I know that we're gonna be upping our game for some of the interview and documentary type things that we wanna do. So we'll be purchasing some more microphones, borrowing some microphones from maybe some other people in the community and see if we can do some reviews on them also. Um, as always, please leave your comments below if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. If you don't and you want to be one of those boo birds, well, give us a thumbs down. But please, again, in the comments, let us know what you didn't like so that we can get better at it because that's what this is all about, going from, well, places where we are consciously incompetent because there's a lot of that going on and moving us through conscious competency to unconscious competency, which is where we need to be as a broadcast type company. Um, so please do all of those things. Please subscribe. Got to get the subscribers up so that maybe this can be a way that we make some money. But please just come back again and again and have a great day and play some tennis. It's a sport for a lifetime. See y'all later. Peace.